Hey, this is Adam Wolf, physical therapist, rock tape instructor. Wanted to share with you how I look at where I'm going to put the piece of tape for the lower extremity helical uh, taping application. I think it's a really good application. What we're gonna do is control that knee and lower extremity when your foot hits the ground, what I consider the first phase of gait. And so what we need to understand is that when your foot hits the ground, your calcaneus everts. It's supposed to do that. It's given for free and your body needs to control it. When your calcaneus everts, your talus is gonna dive down and in, which is gonna take your tibia and rotate it inwards. If it's my right foot, my right shin, or tibia would rotate left when my foot hits the ground. It's supposed to do that. That's gonna create my femur to follow along with it into internal rotation, but it's not gonna do it as fast or as far because the motion is driven from the bottom. When your foot hits the ground, that affects the motion up into your leg at the front phase of gait. And so when your foot hits the ground, your calcaneus everts, the talus dives in, the tibia, right tibia rotates left, but not as far as fast as the foot. Your femur rotates left following the tibia, but not as far as fast. So you can envision if this is the tibia and this is the femur, my right foot hits the ground, they're both rotating in. The bottom bone needs to do it faster than the top bone. And if we fix the top and move the bottom, the knee should feel internal rotation when your foot hits the ground. A little uh, clinical experience, atomism as I like to call it. Uh, my experience is that when your foot hits the ground and people experience, uh, have knee pain at that first phase, a lot of times the knee is feeling an external rotation moment when it should feel an internal rotation moment. And so theoretically, if the, uh, we can place the tape for that helical application either on the femur or on the tibia to help to control the motion of whichever bone the tape is on. And so what I'm gonna do is have my friend Eric come in here. And uh, what I've done, I'm gonna show you how I look at it. If we understand what the motions of the bone should do, uh, we can look for it. So what I like to do is put my hands on the bones and have them go through movement and see which one is moving faster. So I'm gonna have you move over a little bit right here. You can see that I've put a piece of rock tape right on this tibial line. And so if I'm gonna look at his right foot, when his right foot hits the ground, if I'm gonna look at that knee motion, so I'm gonna have him start here. I'm gonna put my hand on the tape, which is the tibial line. My other hand's gonna be about mid femur, okay? So when his foot hits the ground, both my top and bottom hand should move in. I would expect to see the bottom hand move in further and faster than the top hand. So let's see if that happens. You can go ahead and start with your foot right here. And now you're gonna take a slight bigger step, go ahead. And you're gonna come back to that in and out. You're gonna go in and out. Yep, so let's do it a few times. And you can see that as he, do, as he does this, my hands are moving in. And if you look at my hands, you would see that my bottom hand is moving in faster than my top hand. And so that's getting the tibial internal rotation that I would expect to create knee internal rotation. It's happening faster. Let's see versus the other side, Eric. So move over a little bit. Okay, so I got my hand on the midline of the shin bone right here. The other fingers, even right in the mid femur, go ahead and take that step again, in and out. And we could see that this knee is not getting uh, as much internal rotation. When his foot hits the ground, strike with your foot straight ahead, not out. You can see that his, my, sh my hand is moving forward. That's mostly a dorsiflexion or sagittal. I'll expect to see an internal rotation moment when he does it. And it's not happening as much as the other side. So if I was gonna choose to create or do the helical taping application for Eric here, because he's not getting as much tibial internal rotation and I wanna influence that, I'm gonna to choose to control the femur. And so my tape when I wrap around will grab the femur as opposed to the tibia, theoretically to allow the tibia to translate in a little faster than the femur. If his femur was moving, uh, if his tibia was moving maybe excess or where it wanted to be, and maybe I choose to hold the tibia to control the tibia. So that's sort of how I differentially diagnose this if I was gonna then put the tape on. Okay, you can put your foot down. So when I make this first wrap around, I would choose to grab his femur, bend your knee for me, his femur for the application because he's not getting as much tibia motion as I want him to. If he was getting the tibia motion or maybe had too much tibia motion, I might choose to control the tibia with this application of the uh, helix because that's gonna theoretically, where the tape is, it's gonna control the motion a little bit more. So again, that's just sort of some strategy that I use when I'm adding some tape and hopefully this spurs some discussion. Thanks.